the overview of what I'm doing is I'm consolidating major college football to 80 schools, putting it into four regions consisting of 20 teams each. Each region has four divisions with five teams. There are 11 regular season games. Uh, so you play three cross-divisional games within your region. There'd be one protected rivalry outside your division within your region that you would play every year. And then there would be a, you four divisional opponents that you'd play annually. So most teams would play 14 games. The two teams in the national championship would play a maximum of 15 to 16 games, depending on wh where they seated in the playoff. So there would be a region playoffs consisting of six teams in each region, the four division champions and the two wild card teams. Then the division champs would host the playoff game. The one and two seeds would get a first round bye and they would host in the second round. Then the teams that miss the playoff, they could have a senior day on the wild card weekend and play teams from the FCS and all schools would get an additional home game. And then the championship week, all teams within the region would compete for bowl positions against the teams next to them in the region standings. And the champion would advance to the national championship semifinal against the other region champions. So it'd be kind of like the SEC championship. All of the SEC schools would go and play over the course of a couple days against each other, and then they would have the championship. I think that would be a great experience. I think Vanderbilt, Kentucky, and Ole Miss have never, never played in the SEC championship. And I've always heard that it's a great experience. Uh, last time Tennessee went was in 2007, so it's a really rare opportunity. And I think it would be a great event. It'd be kind of like the college basketball conference tournaments where all fans get to come and watch all 20 teams play each other over the course of a few days. But this concept, it protects many historic rivalries and geographically grouped divisions, and it utilizes a dynamic scheduling algorithm for more competitive matchups. So here's what some of the, uh, what the regions look like. So this is the South, and I've got the Eastern Division that consist of the three big Florida schools, Miami, Florida, Florida State, and they're also with Georgia and Georgia Tech. And then we got Alabama, Auburn, LSU, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss, and then Clemson, Kentucky, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt. And in the West, you got Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Texas A&M, and each school will have a rival outside their division that they'd play annually. So you get some great games. Tennessee and Alabama will still play every year. Miami and Oklahoma would start playing every year. Texas and Florida State would be a new rivalry. Those schools have never played each other before. So Auburn would still play Georgia every year. LSU would still play Florida every year. Then in the north, you got Michigan, Michigan State, Minnesota, Ohio State, and Wisconsin. And over in the east, you have Cincinnati, Louisville, and three schools in Pennsylvania. Then in the central, you got schools in Illinois and Indiana. And then in the west, you have Iowa, Kansas, and Nebraska represented. Then in the east, you have division that's all North Carolina schools. Then you have central division that's schools in Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia and Northern Division, that's New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts. Um, and then the Southern Division, I put Air Force in there because Navy and Army are in this region. So I want them to play the other academies more frequently and figured they don't mind flying. <laughs> but, uh, then I uh, got California Division, USC, UCLA, Cal, Stanford, and Hawaii. And then uh, you know, Pacific Northwest 
is represented with the Washington, Oregon, and Boise State. And then the Rocky Mountains are represented with Colorado, Utah schools, and Arizona schools. And then kind of the several schools from the Big 12 are over there in the Plains Division. So you get Texas Tech and TCU and Oklahoma State, Baylor. So you go and take Alabama, for example, like Alabama would play one of the schools from the Western Division. They play one of the schools from the Mid-South Division, and then they play one of the schools from the Eastern Division, and then they play Tennessee every year, and then they play one of the schools from the other regions. And each division is guaranteed a playoff spot. So one of these schools is going to host a playoff, and you know you just have to be better than four other programs to be a part of the playoff. So I think that would be really exciting, and it would have the whole country involved. What about Alabama and Auburn? So they are in the same division. They could both make the playoff. One of them could win the division, and then the other one be a wild card, or both of them could be a wild card if one of the other teams in the division had a great year and they all had really good records. So the dynamic scheduling algorithm, teams will be ranked from 1 to 20 within the region based on wins at the end of the season. And the teams will play teams from the other three regions with the same region ranking as them. And so all the teams that finish first, they're going to play each other. And the teams that finish last, they'll play each other. And then within the region, their division, uh, cross-divisional games will do the same thing. If we rank from one to five, and teams that finish first in their division will play the other teams that finish first. So you get some really competitive games, and I think it would really do a lot of good for growing the game. So take Vanderbilt, for example. Vanderbilt went 2-10 and 10 in 2021, and for the 2022 season, they played five teams that finished in the AP Top 25 poll. Two teams that were in the national championship game, and one team, Ole Miss, made the Sugar Bowl, and Wake Forest played in their conference championship. I might be wrong about that, but uh, yeah, they're anchored to the bottom. <laughs> so... If you took the 2021 results, I've got the regions broken down by wins, and you can see how this would work. You would just go across the row for picking the cross-regional games. So say Alabama, it, they finished second. Georgia had 14 wins. Alabama had 13. And Alabama played Michigan, who went 12 and 2. They played Wake Forest, who went 11 and 3. And they played Oklahoma State, who went 12 and 2. And you look at Vanderbilt, who's at the very bottom, went 2 and 10. They played Kansas, who went 2 and 10. Connecticut, who went 1 and 11. And Arizona, who went 1 and 11. You look Auburn. You can see the divisions here. It's the same thing. The South is at the top, so Alabama was first in their division, but Auburn was last. So Auburn went six and seven. And they would play Vanderbilt, who went two and ten, Georgia Tech, who went three and nine, and Texas, who went five and seven for their divisional games. And you go over here. Auburn is fifteenth. They play Illinois, who went five and seven. Syracuse, who went five and seven, and Cal, who went five and seven. So they're in the same division. And, you know, as a fan, Alabama fans, you're a season ticket holder. You're getting great football games to watch. You're getting uh, some of the best college football teams coming into your stadium that you get to watch your team compete against, while Auburn is looking at who just had a rough season, like, hey, we can probably beat them. We got, got an opportunity to get some wins. And so the season would progress with the cross-regional games and then into the cross-divisional games and into the annual games. And going into the end of the season, you would have a 
more higher probability of having a really competitive playoff race and it'd be a more exciting season. So your divisional games where Alabama and Auburn are playing at the end of the year could have a playoff implications. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool opponents and I went through here and broke down on each school who they would play based off of last season. So, you know, people can go through here and, and see what their school would be doing and what their other teams and their divisions and their regions and how it would stack up. And you can see Vanderbilt down here at the bottom. They would still have to play. Ole Miss is their interdivisional rival. That's an actual rivalry that's being protected. In the Vanderbilt's not that great. So have to play Clemson and Kentucky and Tennessee and South Carolina. So Clemson finished in the top of their division. And Clemson went 10 and 3. They'd have to play NC State, who went 9 and 3. Michigan State, who went 11 and 2. Oregon, who went 10 and 4. Georgia, who won the national title. Alabama, who was runner up. And then Oklahoma, who went 11 and 2. Clemson would play Georgia Tech every year. And then they'd have to play the same divisional opponents as Vanderbilt for Kentucky, Tennessee, and South Carolina. Well, then here's some. Other divisions, Michigan's probably got the hardest schedule in the country. So the interdivisional rivals, if you and your interdivisional rival finish in the same place in the division stands, you play twice. So Michigan would play Notre Dame annually, and they finished first in their divisions. So they would play in South Bend and in Ann Arbor and have a rematch game. And I think that would be really exciting, especially since there would be you know, considered relatively equal competitors. So we'll go through these. So I simulated a season from 2008, and I made schedules based off of the 07 records. So 2008 was the year Florida won the national championship with Tim Tebow, and they did really well. They finished perfect on the regular season. And this is what the playoff would have looked like for the Southern region it had Florida, who went 11 and 0, and Oklahoma, who went 10 and 1. Those are two schools that competed in the national title that year. And then Ole Miss went 10 and 1, uh, so that, that'd be third. And then Clemson was uh, went 6 and 5, and they won their division. And then the two wild card teams would have been Georgia, who went 10 and 1, and Alabama, who went 9 and 2. And then, so the wild card round had Alabama playing Ole Miss, their six seed versus three seed. So Ole Miss would have hosted a home game, home playoff game. They got beat. Clemson would have hosted Georgia for a playoff game, and they lost. So Georgia and Alabama advanced, and Alabama went to Florida and lost. And Georgia went to Oklahoma and won. So then Georgia and Florida would compete would have competed in the championship game. And this is what I was talking about with the region championship week. You could have four days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and have three triple headers on the earlier days and then have the championship game on Saturday. And I think that would be a great experience for fans. And it'd be the weekend before Christmas. It'd be a good time to have sports on and just have some primetime games at night and spread those out over the course of the week and put the games where the teams that are not that great, they play it while everybody's working. So <laughs> I mean, kind of like the, some of the basketball tournaments. Then, yeah, this is for the North and Nebraska. You know, they went five and seven the previous season. They placed first, they went 10 and one. Notre Dame went three and nine the previous year. I think both of those schools had pretty good seasons in 08. Um, but Notre Dame went 10 and one, Penn State nine and two, Wisconsin went nine and two. They all won their divisions. And then Cincinnati seven and four, Pitt seven and four. So those are two wild card teams. So this is what their playoff looked like. It was Wisconsin hosting a playoff game against Cincinnati and Penn State hosting a playoff game against Pitt, and Wisconsin and Penn State advanced, and then Nebraska and Notre Dame hosted playoff games. Nebraska hosted Wisconsin and won, and then 
Notre Dame hosted Penn State and lost. So then this is what their championship week would have looked like. So Penn State playing Nebraska in the championship. Uh, figure you need to have all of these games somewhere that's an enclosed field with an artificial turf that you can have multiple games played on it and not tear it up over the course of the week. Then, uh, yeah, this was the West. So Texas Tech, Boise State, Cal, Arizona all won their divisions. And USC, they went 11-2 and the previous season, so they played a pretty tough schedule. They still made the playoff going 8-3, and three, and Oregon made the playoff. Cal hosted Oregon, and Arizona hosted USC, and both of the wild card teams won. Texas Tech hosted Oregon for a playoff game and won, and then Boise State hosted USC and lost. Then here's what their championship looked like. So the teams that lose in the second round, both the teams that lost in the second round have been playing each other in a primetime slot for Friday night game. And then like the Thursday night game would be the teams that lost in the wild card. And then the rest of the teams are the ones who, they're all next to each other in the standings competing for better bowl games. So and then here's the East. Rutgers, Houston went 9-2. West Virginia, 7-4, and also North Carolina, NC State, Wake Forest. So West Virginia hosted a playoff game against Wake Forest. North Carolina hosted a playoff game against NC State. and So West Virginia and NC State advanced it. Houston and Rutgers host playoff games, and they won their games, so they would advance the championship. And... Houston beat Rutgers, and so the champions are advancing to the national semifinal. So here's what that looked like. So you have Florida won the South, Penn State won the North, USC won the West, and Houston won the East. Florida won the most games, and then Houston down at the bottom. So USC and Penn State will be one of the semifinal games, and then Houston and Florida and Florida, Penn State won, and then Penn State beat Florida in the national title game. I think it was like 10 points. Yeah, so that's what a postseason would look like. I think it'd be really exciting. And, oh, forgot. So I think for a good tiebreaker, if the schools have the same record, since their schedules are based off of how good they did the previous season, you know, whoever had the better record in the previous season would have in theory, played a harder schedule this year. So I think like you would just go with the team that did better in the previous season as a tiebreaker, unless they have a head-to-head. -head. So, uh, yeah, that is my concept.